Hey guys, Craig Frost here for another Juicy Tuts uh, video. Today we're going to look at the new Adobe Premiere CS6. Um, it's just released. Uh, you can download a trial on the Adobe site or of course buy it as part of the uh, Creative Suite. Um, so opening it up here now and uh, just in, as in previous versions of Premiere you get presented with this window where it asks you what you want to do. We want to uh, start a new project here so I'm going to just set this to the desktop um, and then click OK and you'll get presented with all the presets um, so of course DSLR, uh, you've got your ARRI there and RED presets but I'm going to do something here which I wouldn't have done in previous versions of Premiere and that is to select a setting which is wrong for my footage. I have my footage here on the desktop, which I am going to uh, load into Premiere to edit. And that's shot on the DSLR at 1080p. So I'm going to select something which is totally wrong. I'm going to select DVC Pro HD 720, um, 24 frames. So click OK. And I'll tell you why I've done that in just a second. But here we go. We're into Premiere now. And this is what the new CS6 layout looks like. You'll realize from the previous versions of Premiere that this looks a lot different. Um, it seems a lot more spacious, I think. There's a lot less clutter with buttons underneath the uh, preview monitors. And the preview monitors take up the whole space on the top of the timeline. You can, of course, flick back to the old workspace, which is uh, here. This is what it used to look like. But I think for now we're going to stick with the uh, new workspace. Okay, so down here in the left, we now have our project panel, which used to be up in the top left, and I'm going to go to Media Browser. We now have a Media Browser where we can look at footage inside um, Premiere without actually having to import it first. So here we go. This is the footage that I have on my desktop, and I can double-click it, and I can view it inside Premiere before I import it and commit to having it inside the uh, project. Okay, so I want to import all these, so I'm going to select them all and just import. You can, of course, still just uh, select your files and drag them into the project window. Okay, so with the clips here inside the project window now, you can, of course, double click them and scroll through, set your in and out points like you normally would. But you also, if you've got a lot of footage, you may want to uh, search through as quickly as possible to find the clip you want. Well now you can with this new feature called, I uh, don't actually know the technical term for it, what's it called? Hover scrub, there we go. Um, you can just roll your mouse over the clip like so. I'm not pressing anything, I'm just hovering the mouse and the video will play back. And as you found a section you want to set as your in point, you can just press I and then scroll to where you want your out point, you can press O and now you can just drag it into your timeline and it will use those in and out points you just set. Now this is why I this warning here is why I set the wrong settings to begin with. This is something that Final Cut has done for quite a few versions now that Premiere has never done. If you've set your wrong project settings from the start when you import footage it won't match the timeline. Well now even if you set it wrong from the beginning, you can choose change sequence settings to match your clip settings. So click change, and now it's changed my timeline settings to match my DSLR footage without it needing to be rendered. So I can just play it through like so, which I think is a really neat feature. Um, not that it will really affect me as I shoot on the same camera most of the time. So let's bring in a couple more shots here. So I'll press my in point. And you can also scrub through at the bottom of each clip with this little scrubber. Out point, drag it in. And there we go. And I, this it feels a lot more responsive than normal, uh, this Premiere. I think it's using a new rendering engine in the background. Um, also, we've got these nice volume indicators on the right here, which, of course, some people like to... You can move it around, you can drag it to the bottom, which a lot of people like to do. So you get a good representation of the 
audio range in your clips. So it's going across the bottom there. Okay, uh, you, so you can also customize the buttons below each window if you want to bring back some of the old buttons that used to be there. You can just click and drag them to wherever you want. You can move these around like so. I'm going to put these back. So that's basically it for the first look. Pardon me, sorry, I'm burping here. That's basically it for the first look of Premiere CS6. It looks a lot better, it works a lot better, and it's still fully customizable. And I think I'm really excited to use this in a project. We'll have more videos of the features inside CS6 um, coming up soon, but I hope you like this one. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe to Juicy Tuts. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Juicy Tuts. And um, thanks for watching.